during one of the darkest chapters in the Soviet Union's history. Pilot S. Kuznetsov was flying his Aleutian IL-2 Stromovic back from a mission across the vast Russian territories, now dominated by the German military, when he was engaged by a squadron of Messerschmitt fighters. A swift and fierce dogfight ensued, but the Soviet pilot was quickly outgunned and shot down from the sky. As the Stromovic descended, it left a black streak of smoke behind. However, there was no explosion as it touched down. Noticing this, one of the German pilots decided to land on a nearby flat patch of land to finish off the Soviet pilot and maybe claim a victory trophy. But the German could not have known what awaited him as he approached the smoldering wreck. The Flying Tank Despite being completely overwhelmed in the early months of Operation Barbarossa and unable to contain the relentless push of the Wehrmacht's panzer divisions, the Soviets had one ace up their sleeve. It was the emerging Ilyushin IL-2 Stromovic warplane. The formidable aircraft was armed to the teeth. It carried bombs, rockets, cannons, and machine guns, translating into an unparalleled source of firepower that would soon become the scourge of German armored divisions on the battlefield. But what made it the perfect counter to German Panzer units and earned it the nickname of the Flying Tank was its astonishing armor plate configuration, which made it one of the most survivable planes on the Eastern Front and more than capable of sweeping low to deliver its payload to German tanks, buildings, and infantry. Small arms fire would barely damage the Stromovic, and its armor was often able to deflect 20 and 37 mm artillery rounds. The legendary 88 mm German guns would have been a real threat if not for their low rate of fire. The aircraft's armored shell, measured between 5 to 12 millimeters in thickness, covered the engine and cockpit and deflected bullets from small arms and glancing hits from larger caliber ammunition. However, the rear gunners were not as well protected, particularly from the rear and sides, and experienced four times as many casualties as pilots. The situation was made worse by the Soviet policy of not returning home with unused ammunition, often leading to multiple runs on the target. The warplane soon became dreaded by both ground and air German units, which would often struggle to take one down. Moreover, its armor configuration and its reputation as a stalwart flying machine made the aircraft one of the most devastating weapons against the German Blitzkrieg, and the Soviet Union would go on to build 36,000 units, making it the most mass-produced combat aircraft in history. Soaring Encounter Despite being known as the scourge of the German panzers later in the war, the number of Stromoviks was minimal by 1942, and the Soviets were still fighting what seemed to be a losing war. It was then that a Soviet pilot, identified in Soviet reports as S. Kuznetsov, was sent on a reconnaissance mission to Kalinin, now Tver. The western Russian region was entirely controlled by the German military, and the operation was considered a dangerous endeavor. Even so, the experienced pilot accomplished his goals and returned to central Russia when chaos broke loose. The extraordinary events that occurred next have been mostly lost to time, and few official Soviet records remain. Still, the exploits of Kuznetsov were documented in Vitold Lys's Aircraft Profile 88, Ilyushin IL-2 publication, as well as in RCAF War Prize Flights, German and Japanese Warbird Survivors, a book by Harold Skarup. According to the sources, Kuznetsov was suddenly engaged by a squadron of unspecified Messerschmitt fighters who didn't waste any time attacking the lone Soviet airman. As the first German warplane approached the fight, Kuznetsov employed evasive maneuvers and attempted repositioning the aircraft above the enemy for a counterblow. However, before Kuznetsov could set up his warplane for the attack, it was reached by gunfire from the other Messerschmitt, which had now entered the fray. Startled by a direct German onslaught, the Soviet airman retraced and attempted to flee the scene, but it was too late. Several bursts of fire then impacted the flying tank, and although most of them were repelled by the armor, one of its wings was clipped. The Stromovic then began falling from the sky, and Kuznetsov had limited control over the damaged aircraft, with black fumes scarily emanating from its engine. The aircraft eventually crashed into a densely forested area. It was then that, after circling the crash site a couple of times, 
one of the German pilots decided to land on a nearby clear patch of land, eager to collect some battle trophies, and even administer the coup de grace to his Soviet counterpart. Swindling the Hunter Once on the ground, the German pilot walked towards the rising column of smoke in the distance. He was confident that after such a big crash, the Soviet pilot would be severely injured if he had survived the ordeal at all. It was not uncommon for fighters to look for souvenirs among the possessions of their fallen enemies. As such, the German pilot was eager to scour the downed warplane for anything he could take back and brag about. However, as he made it to the wreck of the Aleutian IL-2, he found its cockpit empty. Surprised, but still believing the Soviet pilot would certainly be crawling away somewhere around the crash site, the German airman began to inspect his surroundings, pistol in hand. Little did he suspect he had been deceived. Kuznetsov had made it out of the crash virtually unscathed, and had rushed out of his plane as soon as he saw the Messerschmitt descend. The brave Soviet pilot delved into the forested area and silently hid until the German approached the crash site. He then bolted out of his hiding spot as fast as he could in the direction of the German pilot's aircraft. When his enemy heard the roaring racket of his own Messerschmitt engine, it was already too late. The German pilot mustered all his courage as he ran towards his warplane, just in time to see it climb to the skies and clear the canopies of the nearby trees. Inside the Messerschmitt, Kuznetsov was exhilarated and full of adrenaline as he escaped aboard the warplane of the man who had shot him down. The pilot took a minute to adapt and admire the incredible features of German engineering inside his new airborne ride, but the gravity of his situation soon dawned on him. He had managed to escape back to the safety of Russian territory, but his aircraft would be seen as an enemy by every Russian unit in the vicinity. With no other options left and unwilling to land behind enemy lines, the pilot pressed on. Against all odds, The real ordeal was just beginning for Kuznetsov, and as soon as he drew close to Soviet territory, he began to receive anti-aircraft fire from his own comrades. Even so, he was an experienced and resourceful airman, and managed to evade significant damage as he penetrated deeper behind the Soviet front line. Soon, the menace would grow exponentially. Kuznetsov realized he was being pursued as he heard the familiar rumbling of a Stromovic getting close to his position. He then dove and hugged the terrain but the pursuers followed suit, firing at the incoming German warplane relentlessly. By now, Kuznetsov was close to a known landing strip where he was hoping to reach the safety of his homeland and identify himself as a comrade. However, the friendly fire became ever more intense, and his aircraft began to suffer considerable damage as it made its final desperate descent onto the runway. Fortunately for the daring pilot, the pursuers failed to hit him on their last offensive dive, and once on the ground, Kuznetsov slowly exited his stolen warplane with hands in the air, yelling in Russian, so the local operators would realize he was a friendly airman. A Hero For the incredible achievement of surviving being shot down by enemy fighters and stealing one of their planes to bring back home, Kuznetsov was awarded the title of Hero of the Soviet Union the highest military decoration of the Soviet Union. Years later, as a living legend among the Soviet military, Kuznetsov would perform a last incredible exploit that would cement his reputation as a hero. While fighting in Poland, he was pummeled by enemy anti-aircraft fire. The burst obliterated his canopy, and the blast instantly blinded him in both eyes. Somehow, and defying all odds, the fierce pilot not only flew back to Soviet territory, but also managed to accomplish a forced emergency landing upside down. The feat was unparalleled in aviation history, and the fact that he survived to tell the tale was even more astonishing. Nevertheless, the luck of the valiant pilot had run out. Despite the prompt, life-saving medical attention he received, Kuznetsov would never see again, preventing him from ever again sitting behind the controls of one of his beloved flying tanks. However, he would never be forgotten, as the man who was able to steal an enemy plane and somewhat return to safety. Thank you for watching Dark Skies. If you enjoyed our video, please give us a thumbs up 
and share it with someone else who might enjoy it. Also, make sure to check out our other Duck Documentaries channels to get your fix on wartime stories, and hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest content. Stay tuned.